So how do you go about uh, estimating, like valuing these multifamily properties? Because there's a lot of uh, confusion and there's a lot of, uh, you know, everyone does it differently on how they estimate, you know, what to pay for for these multifamily units. Because you can't do it like a traditional home and comp it, you know, like, oh, yeah, there's one right down the street that sold for 17 million. You know, that's going to be worth that after it's done, you know. So, you know, how do you go about uh, actually running the numbers uh, on these units? to do better in their business, but I also have to... I don't know how to do it. Hey everyone out there in YouTube land um, and in Facebook, and we have it new at the moment with Instagram. So I want to say welcome. Anyways, what we're gonna do here is I have a um, a wonderful, wonderful guest on here with me. His name is Michael. <laughs> um, and hopefully I announce that right so i'm gonna introduce him while uh, i bring him on i'm getting this feedback there we go all right so uh anyways sorry about that everyone um i'm gonna bring him on here he mike manino he is a wonderful gentleman that he has been doing uh you know single family flips he's a contractor um, and most recently, he's been flipping, uh, you know, apartment buildings. And I, I'm, in my opinion, I'm interested in that. So <laughs> I know you guys here are interested in that as well. And so uh, without further ado, uh, Mike, how are you doing today? Uh, Hi, Randy. You? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem. No problem. So I just kind of wanted to, I, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast and, um, you know, bringing your experience and, and kind of talking about the stuff that you do. Uh, and I just want to ask, you know, how did you get started in real estate? That's a, that's a great question. It was a long process. I didn't, I didn't jump into it real quick. You know, I bought my first house at 23. Okay. I think I, I think I bought it for $50,000 and then, uh, I fixed it up and then moved and built my second house and I sold it for, I think a hundred. So I made, I made close to 30, 40,000 after what I put into it. So okay. that kind of got me the bug. And then uh, I started building houses and that's, in, you know, that's basically a big flip, you know, it's right. turning a piece of dirt into a place to live for people. <laughs> and then I started to, uh, um, I started to. Uh... Oh, it looks like we lost him for a minute. All right. While we wait uh, for him to come back. I uh, give me one second here. I uh, sorry about that, everyone. Did you? Did I lose you there? Yeah, you did. So, I apologize profusely. All right. So you were saying you got started. In I bought my first house when I was twenty three, and then I uh, started to then I built my second house, and I I made about fifty thousand on my first house, and I go, this is kind of cool. So when I started building houses, you know, I had a builder's license. And I started building. That's kind of a quick flip. It's not a quick flip. It's a long-term flip. You know, anywhere from three months to a year to, to build a house and then uh, and then sell and make money. Um, but then wait happened, and uh, I had a bunch of contractors. <laughs> Here's how I got into flipping. I had a bunch of contractors, a couple of good guys that were, you know, that were working with me for years, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to lose them. You don't want to lose good guys. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so a good friend of mine who's a real estate agent said, Hey, there's a house for sale right down the road in Oxford, Michigan for 14500 
Okay. Let's grab it, you know, put my guys in there and, you know, have, have them do something for a little bit, make a little bit of money. And then I was planning on renting it out for a few years and then selling it for more money later. Right. And then, uh, that house got done and no joke, this is, and I, you guys can check this out. I bought a house on center street in Oxford, 26 center. And then right across the street, my, I wasn't able to do it, but we were buying houses on, uh, at the Oakland County sale. Okay. And I sent my wife and I said, just, you know, find a cheap house. She goes, there's one in Oxford directly across the street from the house that we have. And I'm like, no. And she's like, yeah, and we're on the, I'm on the phone with her. I said, how much? She goes 14,500. I bought two houses on, on center street in Oxford for 14,500. And I fixed them up, uh, rented them out for a little while. Just, you know, the, the rent, I, I was just anticipating the rent to pay the bills, but I started yeah. making money. You know, then I bought another house and I bought another house and I bought another house and I kept my guys busy. I just wanted to keep my guys busy. And then, uh, and then, um, what really happened was it just started going and going and going. And then my son, my son, uh, started to, you know, get older and he's working at McDonald's. Says, I don't want to work at McDonald's. I want to quit. And I said, well, where are you going to work? You know, how are you going to pay your bills? I made my kids, you know, I didn't make my kids. I gave my kids everything they needed and anything they wanted. I had them work for. So right. they would, uh, you know, if they wanted a car, you know, okay, how are you going to get your car? You want a cell phone? How are you going to pay for the cell phone? You know what I mean? And then they, they'd look online and say, well, if I get on your plan, it'd be another $10 a month. Okay. How are you going to pay for it? Well, I'm cutting the lawn for $25 a month. I'm doing it four times a, a, a month. So I'm making a hundred. I'm like, all right, cool. We're, we're good to go. So, uh, my son quit McDonald's one time and I go, where are you going to work? Are you going to pay your bills? You know, he didn't have any bills. I was just like trying to go. Yeah. And he goes, uh, I don't know. You'll find me a house to flip. I'm like, all right. Two weeks later, I find 1333 Cardigan Street in Oxford, Michigan. I'm like, go ahead. And he, he hopped in there and he, uh, that particular uh, experience was that he hired a bunch of his friends to help him and they all fell down. They all didn't want to work. They all didn't want to do the work. And he started doing the work. He started loving it. And he saw how much I made on the property. And he's like, I want to flip houses. Right. I'm like, all right. So the, how we were buying houses at the time were tax sales or real estate, you know, real, uh, real estate uh, professionals that were friends of ours. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we found another house, found another house. And then we went to uh, seven figure flipping and we turned it into a business. Basically we uh, started, uh, we started getting, uh, we learned how to get. Oh, it looks like we lost him again. Looks like we lost him again. I think his internet connection is a uh, little, little lacking here. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, we started getting the capital together and we started getting crews together. Now we're flipping around 20 to 30 houses a year in Michigan. Oh, that's awesome. So you started with seven figure flipping. You, you said you went to seven, seven figure flipping. Did you join seven figure flipping? Pardon? Uh, did you join seven figure flipping? Oh, it looks like it's lagging. Can you hear me, Mike? Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, did you join Seven Figure Flipping? We did. Um, okay. And that got us uh, that got us to the 30 houses a year. So we're doing anywhere from 20 to 30 houses a year now. We made it a business. And then uh, the stuff we learned from that particular uh, coaching group taught us okay. when we were doing a multifamily. You know, we had a wholesaler come up to us yeah. and say, hey, listen, we got a eight unit in Burton. I'm like, all right, let's grab this one. There wasn't much to do on that one. So we just mm -hmm. fixed up a little bit. And then we sold that one. Um, we got one in Flushing that we still have. And that one was a train wreck. Yeah. You want to talk about a train wreck. We walked in and the guy just didn't take care of it. It was 11 units and we were going to buy it for like 375,000. And I think we got ripped off on it. The, uh, the handles, I'm not joking. The handles for the showers were vice grips on some of the units. Wow. 
they locked down the vice grips on it and it would turn the shower on and on in the shower. So the, the vice grips were rusted, the place was trashed. And we literally had to go through there and do everything. Yeah. Everything yeah. in the unit. So we put in new floors, cabinets, countertops, bathroom vanities, new tubs, new surrounds, new flooring, new um, doors, casing and base, and painted the entire place. Like everything. We put like 12 grand into each unit. The okay. only thing we didn't have to touch was the boiler system. We did new roofs, we fixed all the windows. It was, it was everything. But now we have a unit, you know, the, they weren't paying. We got that one during COVID. They weren't even paying. They weren't paying anything. Two out of the 11 were paying and they were paying $600. So now we're, we're up and running and it's, uh, and we're making a thousand dollars a month per unit. Okay. So you're making, you know, roughly about, uh, you know, a little bit over a hundred thousand dollars a month in net, of course. 10,000 a month. Oh, 10,000. Uh, 6, around a hundred thousand. Now we're doing about, now we're doing about 30, 40,000 dollars on that property. Okay. So and then we're, we're going to sell it too. So, you know, I think you're talking about, you know, fixing up and selling. That's kind of what we're yeah. doing right now. We got one in Redford. We've got a 17 unit. We're doing the exact same thing too. So how do you go about um, estimating, like valuing these multifamily properties? Because there's a lot of uh, confusion and there's a lot of, uh, you know, everyone does it differently on how they estimate, you know, what to pay for for these multifamily units because you can't do it like a traditional home and cop it, you know, like, oh yeah, there's one right down the street that sold for 17 million, you know, that's going to be worth that after it's done, you know? So, you know, how do you go about uh, actually running the numbers uh, on these units? That's a great question. It's just like you said, an actual evaluation of a, um, of a multifamily is a lot different than um, a single family house. Single family house, like you said, there's cops, right? Yep. That's in the equation, but that's not really part of the equation. It's really hard to explain, but let me try and give you a quick, a quick uh, five minute explanation of a, a math equation that's forever. Let's say you have a property and then how much it's making, it's called the NOI. So how much, uh, if it, if it's bringing in a hundred thousand a year, and then typically your expenses are around fifty thousand a year, so you're making fifty thousand a year. That's the NOI. The NOI divided by the cap rate is what you should pay for the property, and the cap so rate's anywhere from what four is to seven. NOI? What is NOI? Pardon? What is net NOI? operating income? Net operating okay. income. Okay, so that's how much it makes past expenses. Okay. Okay. So your your total cash flow basically, which you're getting out, not total cash flow, your 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 total profit from the property. Um and then you, you divide it by the prop the um the cap rate of the area. So those are your comps. What are selling for? What is that property okay. selling for cap rate? So it is part of the equation, but it's really not part of the equation. It's very difficult to understand. But um, that's, and so you, you asked a great question. How do you, how do you value a property? I value the same way a bank does. Mm -hmm. You know, if a bank will give me money on it, I'm going to evaluate the way they do it. Does right. that make sense? Oh yeah. So, so the NOI is the net operating income, net, how much you're making off the property divided by the cap rate, you know, points, 0 0.04 to 0 0.07 or 10, you can even go up to 10%, 10, point 10 is 10%. Mm -hmm. um, that's what the value of the property is worth minus the cap X expense. So cap X expense is kind of like uh, your uh, rehab expense and it comes to a single family. So I'm yeah. going to try and relate you know, single family to, to yeah. uh, a family. So the, the property that we bought, it was, we, we got it for a steal. We got it for a steal, but he was losing money on it. Okay. Two out of 11 people are paying and your taxes are, you know, 10,000 a, a year. Yeah. You're not, you're not, you're losing money. You're paying money to own that property. So we solved yeah. this problem yeah. by taking over. We bought it and we bought that one. We, you know, we had him in the deal a little bit too. So, uh, 
we I think we I think we paid 375. We gave him a hundred, and uh, he carried the note for a year for 250, and we mm -hmm. paid him interest during the time frame. Right, we came with us I think with six percent interest. So we paid him interest on it. So it's kind of a seller. We call it a seller finance deal. Oh yeah. So we gave him 100, and we put 150 into it, and then uh, we refinanced it and uh, paid him back, paid everybody back, and now we're just you know collecting collecting money. And the cost segregation on it. There's another cool, crazy story on that too. A uh, uh, cost segregation is a, a, is just basically another math equation on the property of anything that um, is in the property that is depreciated. Do you ever do a cost segregation? Never done it. I, I don't own properties. I just wholesale at the moment. But I've heard oh. of I've heard of people doing a cost segregation. So, but I don't know exactly what entails in that. Do you, would you like to talk about it, or you want to talk about something? Let's, okay, let's talk this, about it. This so is why. I what, love what's that. what's a cost segregation? <laughs> <laughs> Great segment. Oh, I love this. I can talk about I can talk about real estate forever. I love real estate. That, that's every time I, I should have said I started this uh, podcast with a, I love real estate. Here's why I love real estate. Cost segregation. We bought the property and then now it's a new evaluation. Now the new evaluation, let's just say it's a million dollars. Okay. Right. So a million dollars, um, there's the property itself, the land it sits on and everything that the, the property owns, all 11 units. So all 11 units are going to lose the value on certain things, countertops, cabinets, and we put all the new stuff in. Countertop cabinets, you know, the windows, the roof, you know, we put a new roof on there. So all that loses value. So you depreciate the property of, you know, not the land, but, you know, the roofs, you know, the brick on the house, you don't do it, but the inside, like, uh, you know, the countertops and faucets, sinks and all that. So let's say it's a million dollars. You get cost seg. We cost seg around, I think on that one, $129,000. So we turn the papers in to our accountant and our accountant, um, you cost seg that much money for 27 years. But for the last few years, you're only able to say, take 100% depreciation in year one. Okay. Now, last year was 80%, this year is 60%. So you can only take 60% of the, of the 120, 129,000. Okay. So me and my partner split the first 60,000 we make that year, I think it was, we hit, it was 79,000. We split between us three, uh, us three partners. And uh, the first $25,000 that we made that year, we didn't pay taxes on. So you made, say, your third of that, you said 120000 Yep. Okay. So you made, basically, you got $40,000 of income tax-free that you made. Yes. Yes. So I, instead of having to I, pay Uncle Sam. Uh, on forty thousand dollars worth of taxes, you got that because of the cost segregation, and that's just for that one property. Imagine you have multiple, and I'm sure you guys do. Now you can add on top of that. That is how I'm. I, I'm not political, and I'm not saying I'm political, but that is exactly how Donald Trump didn't pay any taxes. So, <laughs> right there. Yeah. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view 